One bad egg couldn't ruin the meal, could it? That one bad employee, if you just let them chill out and do their own thing, they couldn't possibly ruin the team, could they? Of course not. Are you kidding? Check this out. Just lead. When you have a sizable team, it's easy to overlook the bad eggs for the bigger issues at hand. Bad eggs aren't the ones that are gonna do something that's gonna get them fired. Bad eggs are your belligerent employees that make it hard to be at work, make it hard to be around. They're not gonna do that one thing that's gonna make them lose their job. Because of this, they take more effort to manage as a leader, which means that more often than not, they're allowed to keep on keeping on. But by doing this, you're impacting your entire team's output and performance. In sport, you often hear that you're only as strong as your weakest player. Often being that player, I worked bloody hard to ensure that the standard of our team that I was playing in was always lifting. The same is true in business. The worst employee is often gonna set your standard. And as the leader, it's your job to ensure you lift that standard. When I'm talking about your weakest employee, what am I actually talking about? You've got lazy employees who won't show initiative. They're the last ones to put their hand up to help out. They're the last to work at the start of the day, but they're also the first one out. You've got negative employees who always seem to be able to bring people down with their attitude. You've got incompetent employees. However well they want to do their job, they simply can't get it done because they're not good enough. Gossiping employees will do anything to damage the reputation of the organization by spreading rumors. And then you've got sole employees. And these are the ones that stick to themselves and won't engage in teamwork. And look, I'm sure there are plenty of others out there. What have been the character traits of your weakest employees? Comment them down below. Leaving these people be may be the solution for some managers, but true leaders will want to set up the best environment they can for their team to be productive. There are many impacts to having these employees around. There is the lowest common denominator factor. And this is what I call the effect when you've got an employee whose output is far lower than those around them. Your other employees are gonna look at this individual and wonder why they're putting in the extra effort when this belligerent person is getting away with it day in, day out. Naturally, the other employee's performance is going to slide because of it. Then there is the pay rise bonus factor, and this kind of leads into the last issue. When you work for a large company, you can sometimes find it difficult to give a zero pay rise or a zero dollar bonus each year. I know it begs belief, but this is actually the case. And when you're forced into these constructs, why are the higher performers in your team going to go above and beyond when they're stuck in that same system where everyone's getting the same pay rise and the same bonus? There's no incentive. Therefore, your higher performers are gonna drag back. Then there's employee stress. Working around these employees adds stress to your life. Are they the sort of incompetent that could potentially risk your life? Are they gossiping in such a way that makes you wonder if they're gonna say something about you? With some of the things they tell you about other people, what are they telling other people about you? Then there's excessive leave. Working around these troubled employees is difficult. You might wake up one morning and think, no, I'm a bit tired, I can't handle Joe Bloggs today. Stuff it, I'm gonna call in sick. And then as the leader of that team, when people start calling in sick on this regular basis because of that trouble employee, you find it difficult to execute the day's plan. Then there's the cost of turnover. People leave a business because they don't wanna work with particular individuals anymore. They might also be leaving that business because they don't respect you as a leader because you're unable to manage your team effectively and manage this individual. The cost of turnover is huge. It's not just the cost of replacing that employee, but the cost that goes into getting that employee up to speed over time. They need to get up to the level of the employee that they're replacing. And of course, there is your reputation. Your reputation can be damaged by these trouble employees. 
Whether you're in customer service and they're a bit lazy and just don't wanna get it done, or whether it's the other departments within your organization that looks upon your department as a low output team. If you're out there and looking for advice and coaching and help, I am available and you can click on the Patreon link down below to get access to all my membership packs there in which I can provide feedback and coaching one-on-one -on -one for you and you specifically. Don't underestimate the impact of a trouble employee. What are you gonna do about them now that you know the true impact? Primarily, you need to be honest. Honesty is at the forefront of my system towards great leadership. Have you ever sat them down and told them what other employees think of them? Just this can have a massive impact on output and performance. When you are honest with them, make a plan about your expectations of them. If it's just the first time, just talk it through and then monitor them and pick up on cues from the rest of the team. Make sure they're sticking to the expectations you've set. Beyond these initial stages, if the behavior continued, you need to put them onto a performance plan. And a performance plan is simply to make it formal. You need to have something that you can track objectively whether they're meeting performance targets or not. And it's not a way to get someone out of the business. The best scenario for everyone involved is if they perform better than they did. They follow that performance plan and that employee improves because the pressure and impact on you to fire someone and then the cost to replace them far outweighs the benefit of that employee just improving. So anytime anyone says to you that you're out for blood because you've got all of these people on performance plans, it simply isn't true. You just want higher output from your low performing team members. And if all of this doesn't work, then it's time to take the steps towards termination. If you've done everything prior that I've just mentioned, you should be able to successfully terminate that employee. And while this is not the preferred outcome of this situation, at least you've removed that trouble employee from your team. And then your team can breathe a sigh of relief that it's all over. Do all of this and watch the output, demeanor and energy change from your team overnight. It cannot be overstated the impact that a bad employee has on a team. Do your job as a leader. And if it leads to termination, ensure that you've thought about yourself through this process. You can click here to see what I mean.